Continuing in this video, we will talk about how I personally structure my workflow uh, with the final objective of creating research studies that can be conducted on multiple assets. And at the same time, if those research studies can be interesting to convert them onto a model uh, and then be extrapolated and inputted onto a trading strategy, so that in all these process that I just uh, presented to you, I don't need to change a lot of the code and I can create everything on a, a pipeline-like uh, sequence and at the same time uh, use or branch uh, any of the components to, for example, produce a training strategy onto different assets, but with the same model. So uh, let's jump into the code to see how, why uh, or how this uh, translates in, into practice. I want you to not focus directly onto the code, but mostly on the intuition about what we are going to talk about in the following minutes. So um, I have just opened uh, different modules that I have created on my alpha team repository. And as you can see, we have the asset class module, the portfolio class module, the research study class module, the model class module, and finally the strategy class module. So each of, each of them has its own characteristics. So let's go through the asset class uh, in the first instance to understand that I personally define an asset uh, as in a sequence of observation that it's timestamp, has several values like price and volumes and can be bought or sold. So an asset can have a name and a type, a data type and values. And uh, the, the asset type could be traditional, like for example, the Euro dollar or uh, any of the indexes uh, or an Darwin asset. Uh, the asset data type can be historical or live data and we can uh, make actionable decisions like buy, sell or hold on that asset. Obviously, those uh, asset data can be converted or transformed, aggregated, or whatever other uh, operation that we want to apply on them. So um, as, as this is the first class and this is the first object that we will be defining, it is crucial for me to explain a bit about how the idea of everything in Python being an object can be extrapolated to these ideas onto creating objects that will be inherited by other objects or other classes classes, yeah, at, this, at, the, at the end of the day, that uh, will be used to finally apply uh, some methods and uh, be able to extract some of those methods to finally end up creating what we want, which are models to make uh, actionable decisions of the markets and creating strategies out of them. So uh, this asset class will be much more understood if we go to the subsequent class, which is the portfolio class. And if we look at this code uh, down below here, you can see how we create a portfolio with different assets. We define their name, uh, the, if they are traditional or they are a Darwin asset. And finally, if uh, the data that we will be using is historical data or live data, okay? So in this sense, uh, it is clear uh, the intuition about how we will be composing portfolios that in this case are defined as objects composed of X number of assets, okay? Have this bit uh the sentence right here and it inherits the functionality of a data class and its characteristics so a portfolio can be composed of many assets or of uh just one asset okay and uh this portfolio uh object will be then uh inputted onto our research study class so that we can conduct our formulae hypothesis and try to confirm them on this portfolio object okay Specifically, we will just take some data from that portfolio, make some calculations, and try to return a result to be able to assess uh, our research study. So, uh, like for example, creating asset returns, get distribution plots, get some representations of that, of that price series or return series. And if we go to the following uh, model class, uh, we will also start seeing how the previous work uh, starts to get more onto the final production environment to create that strategy, because we see that this model class inherits from the research study and at the same time from the portfolio class. So a model will just hold the data entry for the portfolio 
and create a decision making that the strategy will finally use. If we consider that the research study that we have conducted, it's interesting for us to create a, a model, okay? And finally, we can end up uh, on the strategy class that will inherit the model and the portfolio, for example, to let's say, have a strategy that rebalances some assets and the model uh, for rebalancing those assets can be, let's say, uh, that we consider some um, returns or uh, some volatility and we finally end up with a very simple strategy or a very simple model uh, in which the strategy here will will add another layer of abstraction in which we will be using other APIs to make actionable decisions and at the same time uh, schedule things like uh, when we want to trade, if we want to trade or not, or other constraints that we want to apply. So to summarize the view on all of this is just to create a workflow in terms of not having to change a lot of the code that we use to conduct research studies and to finally end up with creating models from those research studies to be able to create the strategies. So this sets up the fundamentals and the basis uh, of my research to, to, to be able to assert, uh, invest the less time possible onto changing code and to be able to generalize all that I do to finally create those, uh, those trading strategies that it's the final step that we all uh, want to achieve, okay?